Hey y'all, welcome back to The Ranch. I'm Jared Paul and today it's back to bonsai. Yesterday and the day before I took the time to prune all of the trees that are planted in the ground and even some of the larger ones that are above ground um, and all of the yamadori at the ranch. So it felt good to get all that done for this early spring as things are starting to uh, swell their buds. So um, yeah, I got a ton of cuttings from that. Really exciting, but uh, what's even more exciting is I have my evergreen bonsais behind me, so it's time for the deciduous and less cold hardy trees. First up is going to be the black locust. I have one forest and uh, two specimen. They're between three and four years old, grown from seed. And uh, yeah, we've got to prune them all, and one of them, the terracotta pot, decided to disintegrate over winter so we're going to do one repot as well so that's what's coming up on today's episode of jarhead box so first one <laughs> this is you can't see the base of it but you've probably seen them before it's a plastic pedestal bird feeder that i got three of them for eight bucks each at that same store ocean state job lot uh not a bird feeder bird bath and i just said oh cool it's plastic so i was able to drill holes really easily all around and uh, planted a few forests. <laughs> so, anyways, um, this one is kind of wild. I'll bring you in and show you the roots and gnarly stuff after. Um, but basically, it grew in the seed tray and then I slid it into this. So, any of them that survived, this was just their natural place. So, we've got a clump of two small one vertical and one crazy gnarly low one over here then we have a single here and single here and they're more dominant trees so i'm i want to like really prune this down because can you see like these crazy freaking thorns i don't know i don't know if it went all uh, foggy or focused there but if you couldn't see the thorns are crazy and every time I seem to walk by this thing, I either get my shirt caught or I stick one thorn in my elbow, something. So I'd like to prune them down. They're pretty hardy trees. They grow back strong. So I, uh, I could be a little bit more aggressive. Now that I've had them a few years, I know that. They were very susceptible. Hey, Bruce Lee. Very susceptible to... Um, Uh, spider mite attacks early on and that was the transition i grew them in february i didn't put them outside the first year that was my mistake just grew them inside that whole uh, growing season into the next winter and then um, i put them out the following year but still like uh, spider mites still got a good amount of my black locust actually some really cool roots here and i don't even know if they're all for this tree but we'll get to that all right so this guy here comes up then hard move doesn't really do anything to up there i'm not that interested in this type of movement either so maybe i'll go right about here it's got a branch here. Maybe that'll do something and take over as the new leader over there. At least it's inside the pot, you know, going with the no poking me deal there. There's some dead wood. Uh, there's a little guy down here growing right from the crotch of the main. And since it's got some, I gotta make sure I gather up these cuttings because they will poke the hell of me and Laura and Stella see that these in this pot for now for lack of planning a better place <laughs> okay so back to that tree mm, there's a bud going this way then there's one coming this way and then one back diagonal that might be a cool one so i'll go halfway through i think there's a little bit of dieback on these not the craziest amount i think it also depends when you prune it i'm waiting to prune my maples till late june i'd say going off of some 
advice. I'm going shorter with this one, but I like this branch where it's at, especially with these roots. There's a little one down here coming out of the root I don't like. Anyways, let's go. From the bonsai bloke, he said if you prune your maples when they're growing strong already, they don't have so much die back. And to be honest with my maples, I haven't really enjoyed them, especially the tridents lately, or the past few years, because I would start them inside early. They would come out beautifully. So I would enjoy them, say, late February through March into April indoors. But then those leaves would get completely scorched outdoors when I would transfer them. And um, with already having pruned, I wouldn't prune again. So anyways, this year I'm doing the opposite. I'm not pruning them early. I let them come out of dormancy outside. They're, those buds are starting to swell right now. And uh, cutting off some deadwood here. And after they've grown out strong and created their natural canopy with nice growth that likes the sun, then I'll go ahead and uh, prune them to shape this year. So this year it's all about the aesthetics. A few of them I have to repot, but most of them I did last year. Anyways, sorry about it. I got sidetracked on the, the maples, but that's going to be my technique this year, so it'll be a fun experiment. I've always pruned and repot those tridents in February and then started them indoors. Right. This main tree here. <laughs> It's a very tall canopy, so I'm going to kind of just pick a height. And this is a little lower. So this will be my tallest tree, so I think that was the top last time. So why don't we just uh, hmm, go just above there. Let's do that. This divides here, so I'll let it just nip and tip, so it actually divides into a nice two and then another two. Stick with this tall tree, Jared. Tall tree. I hope that y'all can see that, that this is separate from this. So coming down strong here. There's two branches. Shorten you. I'm not necessarily pruning these for the long game future this time. Pruning them again, like I was just talking about, like the maples for this growing season for them to look their best. So I've taken them back harder in the past. But this year, I'm just making sure everything has its own space, each branch, you know, that the canopy heights make sense and that the, how it's naturally kind of trained itself to grow around each other all gnarly. Let that develop further. Again, some nice finer branching up top. This one wants to grow in between these other two, so I'll I'll keep it for now, but that might have to go in the future. These little nubs, I guess it shows that there's dieback to about a quarter inch, quarter to an eighth of an inch. branches are close right here but I feel like if this one goes this way towards you and this one just kind of comes up a little bit it would be nice so I'm just gonna take this one back to an upward facing it had a downward facing and we've grown right back into this branch the tips 
tip nipping. Oh man, I set up the uh, Rosa Sharon for Cynthia and Fraser fur cuttings downstairs on some heated grow mats this morning. If you didn't see the video, a couple of videos basically preparing for that, <clears throat> check it out. Basically I have three, one huge glass vase filled with water and that is for Cynthia and some Rosa Sharon in it. And then three six inch deep clear plastic tubs filled four inches high with perlite. I'm just pulling this weed out from up here while I'm at it. Uh, it's filled up with perlite and water and they're on top of seed warming mats in the basement so they have like moderate temperature around them, warm temperature for their developing uh, roots on the cuttings and a little bit of light with uh, just a few natural hours of light with the little windows that go into the basement. So pretty much ideal conditions. So if I have success with that, that'll be great creating another thousand or so trees for the future tree farm. And I'm talking 10 to 20 years down the road tree farm um, for free, just from trees I was cutting on my own, out of my own stock. I know for Cynthia and Rosa Sharon grow very easily as cuttings. I hope the Fraser fir do well. I pretty much um, chose the technique with the perlite because there was data on on the Fraser firs doing well as cuttings in perlite. There was pretty much data on every everything for Rosa Sharon and for Cynthia, just depending on whether you're doing them indoors, outdoors, on the time of the year. But water topsoil it didn't really matter perlite this middle one seems to be dead it's a cute little tree down here i'm just gonna barely nip the tip it's funny all from the same seed line and you got some crazy dominant trees here and then like tiny ones like this so that's why i do love forest grown from uh all at the same time from seed one that's wrapping around this other tree <clears throat> it's like really cool in its own way it's like i love it and almost hate it i almost want to take the big tree out and put it like maybe back here or over here <laughs> oh jeez. so these single ones i guess i could do one at a time huh bin full of soil on top of the turning table and then <laughs> tree. All right, so we'll start with the big guy. Uh, these two kind of grew separately from the pack for the forest, so, mm, so I let them be individual and they have huge thorns. It's crazy. I love black locusts. They they grow locally here, especially just a little further away, about an hour and a half ride. I only visit my daughter in Francesca in New York City, <clears throat> in Central Park and along the local highways and stuff there. A lot of black locusts uh, in the uh, sidewalk plantings as well. And they have about eight to ten degrees warmer on the average climate than here even though we're that close and so the growing season on the black locusts is much longer really cool really cool tree get very gnarly cool like little pods and stuff i think every locust flowers in some way i don't like it specifically for anything like that it has like a tropical can't tropical like uh leaf 
and for being in a very cold climate. Comparatively, I consider it very cold, basically five months of winter. Um, having a tree that looks tropical that can grow outdoors is cool. And it follows the sun like a jacaranda or a flame tree, things you see on islands, tropical uh, climates. I've got a couple of lower ones just down here. I don't even like them, I'm getting rid of them. I'm actually going to do the same with this. Don't need a sacrificial branch because I have this early divide here that I'm going to let develop. And this thing I'll thicken up naturally here. Snipping the tips everywhere else. There's some of last year's dead wood here. All right. Nope. Oh, have this guy growing across. Don't like that. It's good. It was a different color. It was reddish. <laughs> Let's see it. All right. Oop. Oh, crotch branch. Crotch branch. No crotch branch. This stayed outside year round, talking on that topic of them growing locally. This one did. The one in the bird bath didn't. For the sole reason that it had a shallow root base and I and it was elevated so I didn't want it to freeze. This was nice and deep and I was able to settle it down into the mulch. All right so I have staged them. I'm sorry I ran out of memory on my phone. I have staged them boom boom over here in the corner because I won't get poked over here so Got boom and boom and boom before I was telling you about the roots. That is awesomeness. And the crazy one crawling along the ground. And then it comes up and around that other guy. I think that's a cool feature. We're starting to get some nice trunks on them. So. I guess if I had to pick a front, that would be it. I basically didn't want anything reaching out and grabbing me. Maybe that's better. Yeah, I gotta prune this branch a little more. Probably chop that one back to here. But then that'll be it. I clean up the moss and rocks in there. We're about to get some rain. So I'll have to finish this one. Another time. That would be my recommendation. If you, you have a lot of bonsai or you want to get into bonsai, don't put every single little step on a pedestal. Just when you have time, go ahead, do it. Even if it's one small part, because uh, before you know it, you could feel overwhelmed and it becomes a chore rather than a joy and an art form. So anyways, four years of this going on, uh, going on five. I've learned enough to know that I know very little, uh, but it's been a lot of fun. So finally my trees growing from seed are paying off, and uh, that's going to do it for today's episode of Jarhead Bonsai. I'm Jared Paul from My Family to Yours. Cheers.